Hey guys, it's Robin the Lady Biker, and welcome to Perth, Australia, guys. Ah, I'm here. All right, so when I saw y'all about a week ago, I was very sad to be saying farewell to Bob. And then now here it is a week later, I am truly on the other side of the world. But in doing so, I think I'm about to upset the algorithm. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Hang on. Well, okay, guys. Hey, how's it going? All right, so I'm in Perth. I'm in Australia. Ah, who knew? So I wanted to come down today and talk a little bit about now that I'm on the other side of the globe and I'm looking at putting up another YouTube video, there's some things I'm starting to realize. And I want to take it back to the importance of consistency as a content creator here on YouTube as far as your, your timing but also some pieces of advice that I was given as a brand new content creator, not only here on YouTube, but also on, on Instagram. And how I think I'm about to do something that might upset the algorithm. Hmm. Oh, okay. So one of the, the most consistent and I think the best piece of advice, hold on. All right, guys, so we may have a few breaks because they're doing some serious construction right behind me over here. So anyway, one of the most consistent and best piece of, pieces of advice I was given as a baby YouTuber was that consistency on your upload times and dates is really, really important to set a schedule and to be consistent. Because the more consistent you are and the more frequently you're on, the better the algorithm performs for you as a content creator. Now, that can cause some other issues, which that can be a whole other video for coming up with content and different things like that, which we can talk about on another day. However, what I'm talking about specifically is I have established a rhythm or a specific schedule and I, that the algorithm should be used to. However, now that I'm in gorgeous Western Australia, I'm literally on the other side of the world from where I was. So being able to be consistent with my upload times would mean it's going to go up at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., something like that for me. That's a little early to roll out of the bed to, to optimize my SEO. So I was trying to think about, okay, what are some things that I can or can't do and what are the risks? Now. Any time, and I've seen this from my own personal experience as well as I've heard it consistently from other content creators, and especially those that have even larger channels than I do, is when you make alterations, such as upload time, upload length, you know, anything like that that you're going to change, it's going to skew your analytics for a period of time. So you will, and I personally have seen when I've made some changes in the past, I have seen a dip in my analytics. And so you just kind of have to be prepared for one of those whenever that happens. So guys, I'm taking a deep breath because the second piece of advice I was given that I've really found to be such a valuable piece is not only do you need to be consistent, but you pick, even if the analytics is not ideal on your analytics, pick a time that is convenient for you to be consistent because it's the consistency that's really going to drive things more than pretty much anything else. So in order to find a time that I can consistently jump on and optimize my SEO and connect with you fabulous people out there on YouTube is to take is to maybe go against the analytics and to change some things. So I am possibly going to upset the algorithm and see a dip in my viewership for a while, but you have to kind of play it, balance those things because being a content creator here on YouTube, especially if you're not a full-time YouTuber, which let's face it, the vast majority of us here on YouTube are not making our living being on YouTube. We do this because we love engaging. We love creating content. We love talking to all of you out there. So you sometimes have to make choices 
to be able to do things in a way that are going to really kind of help you out. So guys, have a couple of things that I am really going to be asking some help for because so many things are coming out. One, over the next few weeks, I will be reaching out in some of my posts, my community posts, asking if the timing is really a huge shift for y'all or if it's really, ah, it's not that big a deal. So that's question number one. Now, I'm going to shift a little bit in a topic here because this is kind of like bonus for those of you because those of you who stick with me to this point in a video y'all completely rock and I appreciate y'all so much so here's my second question I put up in a post I think it was yesterday <laughs> I put up in a post yesterday about how not having a motorcycle now for a couple of weeks it's really starting to cost it's highlighting how important being a rider is to me. Okay, I think I got another moment before they come back with whatever that uh, construction equipment is. Being without a motorcycle for the last few weeks has really highlighted for me how important being a rider has become. I love riding on two wheels. It has become part of who I am. And as an update, Scarlett is still waiting to get on a ship in California. So I, and now that I've been in Perth for a little bit of time, I'm finding that her being such a large bike is going to be a little bit difficult to handle, especially when I'm inside the city. So I'm, so I'm going to be looking for a zip bike I guess would be a good one a zip code bike something that's going to be a good bike for inside the city so I'm gonna be looking for a smaller one a smaller soft tail or even a different make but a bike that's gonna be very very useful for when I'm just here within Perth and then I'll have Scarlet for when I get out and start heading up the coast or out into different air more outlying areas and especially whenever I can get out over onto the east side of the country and check out all of you awesome people in Melbourne, Adelaide, and Sydney, and Brisbane, and oh yeah, I am making that ride. So guys, if you've ever ridden in a city consistently, regularly, or you used to at one point, what bike would you recommend and why? So, all right guys, that gives me a couple of questions for all you out there. Thank you so much for everyone who has supported and encouraged me through these crazy few months of getting here. And there's probably a few crazy months still to come as we try to, you know, finish off getting settled here and finding a home and finding transportation and learning to drive on the opposite side of the road. <laughs> That's going to be a big one. So anyway, guys, I hope all of you out there ha are having fantastic weather and you can get out and ride. When you do, have fun. Be safe. I'm going to catch you all in the next video. Bye, guys.